Rowan Barrett Jr. is back. Scotty is potentially injured, and he got into a fight with Aaron Gordon. It, it, there was a lot of stuff in this game. Let's go into the film room. RJ Barrett's presence on offense was a revelation tonight for many reasons, but mostly paint touches. Just using that gravity to finish inside, draw attention, and it's great that he's hitting his outside shot as well. Here he is curling to the corner, setting his feet square and knocking down the three. But it's also the transition stuff. You know, he's great at the grab and go once he gets a rebound and pushes it. But truthfully, it comes down to paint touches. He is the best on the Toronto Raptors at generating touches, creating gravity. Look look at how many eyes are on RJ as he dumps it off here to Jakob. Again, really, really talented transition player. Watch him speed up here as he recognizes Scotty gets the ball, gets past his defender and goes up for the dunk. Admittedly, RJ got a little gassed throughout the game, but that's natural, especially because he hasn't played in a month. This is some of the secondary creation that he's great at here. Pick and roll. Nice pocket pass to Boucher for the finish. Little delay action here with Jonathan Mobo. Takes the dribble handoff, flows into a pick and roll. Great job of clearing out by Scotty, and he just finishes through contact. I like the fact that he is generating so much attention when he drives to the rim because that creates great opportunities for his teammates. As you see here, you know, he curls to the basket. Watch how all of these defenders are looking at him. Beautiful pass to Jamal Shedd, who attacks the closeout, finds Mobo, who gets the dunk. Does a great job of hunting out the mismatch in transition. This time he gets Jamal Murray in the post, and that's easy for him finishes over top. Watch how his rim gravity on this possession creates an open three for Grady. So delay action here. They're looking for him. Great cut by RJ. He makes himself big. Both defenders go to him. It results in a Grady shot. Nice little ghost screen action here between Scotty and RJ. He takes it to get advantage of the post up, uses the miscommunication to find Mobo, a beautiful read, and Mobo gets fouled there as well. Once again, his gravity driving the ball, creating open shots. This time an open shot for Jameson Battle, but it gets blocked by Peyton Watson. Really great block there. And this, I mean, this is this is why he's a great athlete. Bad communication there from the Nuggets defense, and he just rises up and dunks over Aaron Gordon. Didn't have much of an impact on the fourth quarter. We'll get to that with Scotty and Grady. Uh, obviously, with Scotty getting hurt on one of the final possessions of the fourth quarter, it was RJ who had to lead them in overtime. It was, uh, I thought there were a lot of things that he needed to get better at. You know, obviously the turnovers were a thing. Sometimes he forced the issue. Ultimately, a lot of that is because he, he looked kind of tired throughout the game. But he was still finding ways to make plays. Pick and roll here, finds Jakob for the finish. This time again, he drives to the basket, driving left. Gets the help from Michael Porter Jr. Nice pass to Grady, who flips it to Davion Mitchell for the three. That three was as a result of RJ. Again, curling to the basket here on these little pet pick and rolls with Jakob finishing over Jokic. And I know people are going to want to talk about that final possession. I think the Raptors should have called the timeout on that final possession. They were getting great plays out of timeouts throughout the game. Great offensive sets from Darko Ryakovic. If they actually wanted a really good shot, I think they could have got it if they called the timeout, but they didn't. Whatever. It's fine. RJ Barrett went ahead and said, it's my time to shine and decided to hoist up this three. Truthfully, you know, you said after the game that that's a shot that he likes, the shot that he wants to take. It's the confidence that he has. I, I, I appreciate the confidence, to be honest with you, and especially for a rebuilding team that isn't looking to win every single game. Um, I thought that that was a fine shot to take. He was confident in it. It was in stride, pseudo transition. It was fine. That being said, I think they could have got a better quality shot if they called a timeout. Uh, and for what it's worth, they decided not to. They thought maybe they could catch the Nuggets in transition and get an open opportunity. RJ decided to shoot it that way. So it is what it is on that front. Folks, this was a crazy, crazy game all throughout. The Nuggets bench was absolutely abysmal in this game. They were terrible. Russell Westbrook was a negative. Peyton Watson was a negative. Dario Saric was a negative. Julian Strother was okay, but still not a very impressive outing from him. And so in those moments where the Nuggets bench was on and Nikola Jokic was off, the Raptors just dominated. They, they were incredible. Jamal Shedd making plays. Jonathan Mobo having his impact again, uh, again in a small ball five type of setting. He was excellent. Um, RJ Barrett, again, I thought he stepped in in that bench lineup. So it was Scotty plus bench plus RJ. And I thought that was really, really unique. I thought 
it's something that's really important to what the Raptors want to do in those bench lineups because it's Scotty creating, but RJ finishing, you know, and then you have shooters and ball handling next to them that can kind of alleviate some of the things that they can't do. And so um, I thought this was an awesome game all around from every Toronto Raptor. Jakob Pertl was exceptional. Ochai Abaji had a really great game. Davion Mitchell had his career high for the Raptors uh, so far. I think he had 16 to finish the game. There was a lot of great moments from many, many Raptors. But I was really impressed with how Scotty Barnes and Grady Dick played in the fourth quarter. Going to go into the film room here as well. This was a professional move by Scotty Barnes to start the fourth quarter. Denver was making their comeback. He attacks Aaron Gordon's weak foot and then settles into this fadeaway bank shot. Here he is using his activity off ball, gets the steal as the weak side help. Raptors are off and running. Thought Grady was really, really timely with his shooting here. Shakes up as Davion drives, gets the Kawhi bounce to go. And then off of a go screen action with Scotty, pops out, nails the three. Really, really big shot there from Grady. Great confidence to shoot it as well. Here Scotty is, you know, bad pass, bad turnover, but he makes the effort to go all the way and get this massive block. You could tell that Scotty and Grady wanted it tonight. They wanted to win this game, and that's what makes this one a little bit more disappointing too. Scotty didn't shoot the ball well tonight, but in clutch moments he did, rising up over Christian Brown for the three. Here he is recognizing the Christian Brown mismatch in the post and then just taking advantage of it to draw the foul. And honestly, on the final play, I thought he did a great job of getting a good shot. You know, they run an inverted ball screen. Obviously, they're going to switch that because they don't want a wide open shot for Grady. And so Jamal Murray on Scotty gets pretty good position, rises up over top. It just rims out. Really unfortunate that he got hurt on that. Uh, it seemed pretty serious, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, he, he got an elbow to the eye. And so I don't want to jump out and be like, man, it's very concerning. But it's just, it's a bummer because RJ Barrett just came back. <laughs> and so it's just unfortunate because we haven't seen this team fully healthy for more than three games. They had the, that three game stretch where you had the pizza party, I believe, uh, and you got, you know, Scotty IQ and RJ playing together post Pascal Siakam for the first time. And then Scotty got hurt and then IQ and then RJ. And so like, it's just, we haven't been able to see this team fully, which is really unfortunate. I do hope that Scotty is okay. I hope that it's nothing too serious. And I hope it's something that, you know, maybe he's out for a couple of games, but, you know, he can eventually come back from. Uh, and, and again, like, there's different things to this. You know, I was talking to a friend who thought it might be an orbital, fra orbital fracture, which is, you know, obviously uh, like the eye socket, the bone here breaking. And so we've seen players work like that and wear the mask and all that type of stuff. I'm not going to like speculate. I'm not, I'm not trying to do speculation here. We'll see what happens with Scotty. Hopefully he's okay. The rest of the team, uh, man, I, I really love the identity that the bench is starting to play with. Uh, I think that's something that's awesome. You know, Jamal Shedd, coming in, being this playmaking guard who can get downhill, make pass. He, he was making some really, really nice passes in this game. Uh, Jonathan Mobo playing with an incredible amount of energy. Deflections. Uh, deflections are us, really, for Jonathan Mobo in this game. Just really active. I don't know why I said active like that. Really active on the defensive end, getting steals, getting deflections, making things tough for the offense. And, and man, the Nuggets offense was really, really tough for the most of this. Nikola Jokic just had to go incredible. Like, First time in Nikola Jokic's career where he went back-to-back 40-point -back games. That's that's incredible to think about. You know, the Nuggets are in a really, really interesting position because they're asking Jokic to do more than he ever has in his career, which is bizarre given the fact that one of the things that, you know, MVP voters talk about is the plus-minus thing with Nikola Jokic and how he is so much better. The Nuggets are so much better when Jokic is on the floor. It's just bizarre to me. Uh, and truthfully, I think Denver is in a more concerning thing. They're, they're, I, sh I would be more concerned about the Denver Nuggets than I am about the Toronto Raptors in this situation, just because the Nuggets are looking to contend and they do not look like contenders so far this season. On the Raptors front, you know, back to the bench mob, I really thought that they developed an identity. I actually, you know, while I think Ochai was good as a starter, 
him shifting into a bench role really like heightens what the bench can provide because now you have Ochai, you have Jamal, you have Mobo who can play viably with your bench groups. And if you add Scotty and RJ in that, and that's like that's like a legitimate group that you can run together. And I think it provides a lot of pop on both ends. They were playing quick. They were playing in transition. They were pushing. Uh, and they kind of made the Nuggets look a little bit old, especially that Nuggets bench with Russell Westbrook and Dario Saric. And so I, I'm just impressed, to be honest with you, with this Toronto Raptors team. I mean, we're four games in. You have the opening night debacle, 30-point game. It was ugly, right? You have their gritty 99 free throw game against the Sixers where Jonathan Mobo breaks out and the bench starts to develop and Jamal Shedd plays well and you're you're starting to work through the kinks of what this team could potentially look like this season, the identity of the team. Uh, Really feisty loss in Minnesota where they tried to scrap and tried to get things going, but the Timberwolves were just too talented for them. And then this game against the Nuggets where they legitimately played better than the Nuggets for most of the game except Nikola Jokic. (laughs) And Jokic just kind of led the Nuggets and did his thing and MVP-like and sort of dominated, uh, not sort of, completely dominated anytime he caught the ball. So how do you contextualize that? Well, for me, it's mostly like, one, Scotty was incredible in this game, looking confident, hunting mismatches. He loves playing the Nuggets. The man, actually, if you go look at some of Scotty's best games, they're always against the Nuggets. Um, RJ coming back has really changed the Raptors offense and, you know, ignited them in a really great way in terms of the driving capabilities and whatnot. Grady looking confident. Grady just making star plays, honestly, in certain moments. And I, I think, you know, I've had a couple people mention to me in the YouTube comments that they think Grady is a negative defender. I actually wouldn't go that far. I think there are moments where Grady does get killed, especially against players that are stronger than him or maybe quicker than him. But I ultimately think Grady has taken a pretty big step defensively this season. Uh, He's fighting more. He's fighting around screens more. He's working harder. Uh, He's made some pretty great plays using his length. You know, the block shots, uh, the steals. Like, I actually think he's... I wouldn't say he's a, a neutral or positive defender yet. I... I think he would just be like a a guy who you are willing to put on the floor because of how good they are offensively. And I actually think he has a chance to be a pretty good defender eventually, just because of his size and his length. Uh, The foot speed is something he'll obviously have to work on, but I I honestly think Grady will be a pretty good defender in his prime. Um, But yeah, that's another story for another day. Look, Raptors lost. I think it was a good loss. Um... Really hope that Scotty is okay. I think that's the main thing here that you want to take away and be like, okay, it was a good loss, but is the is the franchise okay? Because ultimately you want to see IQ, RJ, and Scotty play together because this team is pretty damn interesting when it's healthy. Not saying they're gonna be a playoff team or whatever, but they're pretty damn interesting when they're healthy and they're fun, which I think, you know, Raptors fans, you guys deserve the fun, especially after the last couple seasons that you guys have been through. So yo. Subscribe to the Raptors Republic YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for listening. As always, like, do the things you guys usually do. If you like this video, comment, let me know. Holla at your boy. Um, because, you know, it's 1.30 in the morning right now. Grinding it out. Post-athletic podcast. Because I want to get this out for y'all. So let me know if you guys like this thing. Let me know if you enjoy it. Okay. Anyways, I will see you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye.